Hi, it's Tom with Digital Foundry. Pokemon Go is everywhere and, well, there's a very good reason for its success. Essentially, we're looking at a perfect match between a well-loved franchise on the one hand and some very exciting technology on the other. We're talking about an augmented reality game where any player can walk out of their house or office in our case and have a 3D Pokemon composited into their camera view. But on top of that is the GPS tracking element, meaning the Pokemon you find are of course going to vary depending on where you go in the world. In our case, that was just a few measly Rotatas and Spear Elves. But of course, we have seen GPS tracking and augmented reality combined like this before. Technically, it's building on the foundations of Ingress, another game made by developer Niantic. The idea there was to claim territory using portals strewn across the world, and the people who took part in that game's beta helped define where the parameters were. Now, that hasn't taken off to nearly the same level as Pokemon Go, but the basic principle is the same. To explain, Pokemon Go uses your phone's GPS signal to pinpoint your location, and then uses Google Maps as a starting point to build the virtual world on your screen. From there, Niantic has planted geographical markers everywhere to determine where Pokestops and gyms appear. But that's not the interesting part. All of these locations are actually based on the data from the last game, Ingress, and typically you'll get gyms assigned to churches or other big monuments in your area. But for the Pokemon themselves, well, this is where things get a bit more interesting. This aspect was designed just for Pokemon Go, and every creature is planted across the world based on an entirely new dataset to Google Maps. Rather than simple GPS locations, you even have other factors like terrain type coming into play. Based on this data, the type of Pokemon will vary accordingly, whether that's primarily rocky or grassy or if there's water nearby. It's all logged on their system. Even climates around the world play a part. This is impressive stuff, but maybe not in the visual sense. Whether you're on an iPhone or Android, we've seen more advanced 3D rendering in games, and really the graphics on screen are tailored to a kind of middle ground, so as many people can play as possible. It's simple, colourful, but effective. The real marvel here though is that killer combination of different technologies widely available in all smartphones. It's the GPS tracking, the augmented reality that leans heavily on your camera and phone GPU, the networking between players once they reach a gym, and it's also tapping into that huge pool of geographical data to add context to everything you see on screen. It all turns the world into one giant playground. Yes, we have seen it all before in Ingress, and yes, we have seen augmented reality games on smartphones before, and even Nintendo's own 3DS. But Niantic has a resource at its fingertips to power something else entirely, and it's an experiment that's paying off hugely. Look into the future, we'd actually be surprised if Nintendo doesn't factor this success into their plans for their new NX console, heavily rumoured at this point to have a handheld component. If we do see GPS tracking on the final spec for Nintendo's new machine, it'll be obvious where the inspiration came from. And based on Pokemon Go's huge success, we can expect plenty of imitators trying their hand with the same technologies in each smartphone. Anyway, that's all from me. Hopefully I'll have more luck with the weather with my next go of Pokemon Go. But do like and subscribe if you found this interesting, and until next time, thanks for watching.